video I am going to give you a few of my personal tips or what I do to study for more science exams. I know the majority of my videos are mostly about social sciences, so like psychology and uh, I don't know, sociology, etc, etc. But someone suggested that I should try giving some advice on the other spectrum, the hardcore sciences. And what I want to focus on uh, in this video is more specifically like um, biology, physics and uh, chemistry. Yes, I've done them all. Yes, I know how grueling the exams um, are. So I hope this video isn't reaching you too late for those of you that are, have finals coming. Now the first tip I have for you is to be visual. Because in uh, such classes like biology, I know there's a lot of drawing, there's a lot of pictures. Um, it's a very visual um, class or discipline. And so when you study for such exams, it really helps to situate all the terminologies, all the keywords, where everything is, and to have kind of like a map. But when you do study for biology, even for physics, I know there's a lot of drawings and graphs. By all means, draw them, practice drawing them, even if you're not like Picasso, like me, draw stick figures, just so you can situate where everything is. This helps not only better remember the material, but also to like situate yourself in the big picture. Uh, because it can help you out with a lot of questions, like let's say if they ask you how does food travel from the, you know, etc, etc, digestive system. Well, if you have the visual representation of the whole body in your mind, it's gonna help you with the question. It's gonna help you be like, oh yeah, you know, I passed here and this was a term here. So it's it's really important to draw, to just go nuts and let your inner artist come through even though it is a science exam you're studying for. The second tip is to focus on formulas. This is pretty obvious when it comes to physics and uh, chemistry, but formulas are key. They're very important. Um, of course, you need to highlight them, memorize them, practice them. Uh, you can do like a list of all the formulas and just repeat them all over and over again until you know each formula by heart. Uh, unless you're allowed a cheat sheet, I know for finals sometimes I was allowed a cheat sheet, I think for physics but not for chem. Uh, but definitely know your formulas, do not go into a final without knowing them because you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> the third advice I have for you is to I don't know how to explain this, but this, when I realized this, it helped me out tremendously. Now, to some people, this can seem kind of like, well, duh, but to me, it took me a while to realize this. Basically, in every more science-y discipline, um, like I said, in chemistry, in physics, and even in math, every time you do a test, or every time uh, you learn a formula or something, there are specific types of problems for each formula or for each, I don't know, for chi-squared, for multiple regression or whatever. There's formulas and there's problems for each. What I didn't know was that there are only a handful of problems for each. So if you know every type of problem there is, you're pretty good. Because basically on the final, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take one of those type of problems and, I don't know, change some words around a little bit or change the name of the people that are interacting or change the numbers off. But basically, deep down, it is a type of problem you've encountered before. So on the final, there is no way, unless the professor is really, really mean, that they're gonna ask you something you've never seen before. So basically, when you look at problems, even in chem, even in physics, there's types of problems that repeat over and over again. And just a few things are changed to make you feel like they're different, but underlyingly, they're the same. Just to give you an example, me, the classical one in physics was like, a plane is going etc. miles per hour and you drop something, where will it fall on point X? That problem, I've seen it a billion times. It's the same problem with the plane or the train that rides and then it drops something and where does it fall. 
So if you familiarize yourself with the types of problems and you know how to solve them, it's gonna save you tremendously on the final. So basically, learn the types. And the last point I wanted to make was pretty much for sciences, the key to getting those A's, those A pluses, A minuses, and whatnot is to practice. If you don't practice when you study for science exams, you will not do well just by learning the material. It doesn't work. You need to know how to apply it. You need to see as many problems and solve them as many as you can. Because that is the only way how, like I said in my previous points, you'll familiarize yourself with every type of problem you might encounter. That's how you'll know what your weak points are. And at one point, for me anyway, when I was doing math or like chemistry, I could do the problems with like headphones on and music blasting because my brain just went into automatic. Like I would just like do them, do them, do them, do them. It was natural to me. I didn't even need to think about it. It was like second nature. That's the point where you need to get to. And with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you want to see more like how to study for science or physics or chem or even, I don't know, like history or just tell me anything, I've pretty much done them all. So I can try my best to help you out with any discipline. And don't forget to subscribe to me if you like what you see. I will definitely see you in my next video. And I wish you the best of luck with the finals. Uh, I finished them. So yay! I'm gonna go sleep now. Bye guys!